Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire. Today I thought I'd share three fun ways to incorporate money onto a card. So sometimes cash is a great gift to give, especially to somebody who's younger. And I'm going to show you three ways to incorporate the cash as part of the card. And it really kind of makes it more special, a little more thoughtful. So there are three examples here. I'm going to go ahead and start with the first one. This is actually supposed to be my dog Foxy and he's holding $20. And this is to go to my son's uh, baseball instructor, the guy who gives us lessons. Instead of handing him $20, I thought it'd be fun to do a fun card. These are the stamp sets I'm using. The new one on the left is Crazy Dogs from Tim Holtz. And I'm also using this Crazy Things accessory stamp set over on the right. So that left set there is brand new and I thought it'd be fun to use it. My friend Christina Werner actually drew these for Tim Holtz and I uh, thought I had to use it because this one looks just like my dog Foxy. You could use them on acrylic blocks, but I did want to show you that you could use them also with your Misty stamping tools. Some people were asking how to use cling stamps since they're thicker with the Misty. What you do is you take out that black foam piece and you can then use your Misty the same as you would with clear stamps, but you can use it with cling stamps. So I've put my stamps where I want it and I put some black Nina solar white cardstock into the, into the Misty and I'm stamping this with uh, the black hybrid ink from My Favorite Things. This is a Copic friendly ink. Remember you could use an acrylic block instead and you could color this however, however you would want to, but I decided to use Copic markers today. The reason I switched over to the Misty instead of the acrylic block for this image is sometimes when I'm stamping with a black Copic friendly ink, I don't get very dark images. So I like to double stamp it. So I'm inking it up twice and stamping it twice right on top of each other to end up with a really nice crisp black image. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly show you the Copic coloring I did and then I want to get on to the money uh, feature of this card. So here I'm using like some reddish brown colors. I've got the color number up there in the top corner. This coloring is like my dog Foxy. She's a Visla and she's kind of a reddish brown. And again, Christina Warner designed these for Tim Holtz and I just love this stamp set. So I started out with the darkest brown in the darkest areas and then moved to a medium brown and then to a light brown. I do go back and add a little more darkness with the darker brown to finish it off. You can use Copic markers in so many different ways and really it's just whatever method works best for you. I turned the tennis ball into a baseball by adding little red stitching and that little party hat I'm saving for a different project. I'm also coloring the collar blue here, and you'll notice that the little tag, I just colored right over it with brown. I wanted to change it to yellow, so I'm just kind of scribbling right over it a lot, and it changes the color. That's one of the fun things of Copics, is you can change it by going over it with another color. I thought I'd make this dog a little more playful by adding two different color or two different sizes of Google Eyes. I like to get a variety pack of Google Eyes so that I can mix up what I use on a project. I added that with Multimedium, which is from Ranger. It's a nice matte finish adhesive that's very strong. And I also put little happy eyebrows on the dog just to kind of make them a little more smiley. There are not coordinating dies available for this stamp set yet, but there will be in the future. So I just went ahead and cut it out right along the lines. Now this is the money holding feature on this. I took a $20 bill and I'm just rolling it up as tightly as I can. Again, you could do any cash amount you wanted to here. You could even roll up a little note instead or even a check if you wanted to. But I decided to go with the $20 bill because that's what I owed my son's baseball instructor. Right when I get to the end, I put a little bit of adhesive on it. Now it's not enough that it would tear the money when they go to open it. If you don't want to put adhesive on it, what you could do instead is just tie a little string so it keeps it nice and rolled. But I found, I've done these cards many times in the past and I've never had any problem with using just a little bit of a, an adhesive like that that you can rub away with your fingers. I decided to have this dog kind of hold the money under his arm. So I'm just cutting right along his arm so that I have somewhere to tuck it in. So look at your stamp sets and think of what stamp sets you can incorporate the money along with. Okay, so now I have my thanks greeting. This is a stamp set from Waffle Flower. I quickly colored it with a light teal color and then I added some shading with a darker teal color. This is such a fun stamp set from Waffle Flower and I thought the feel of it went really well with that dog. So I glued those letters after I cut them out to the bottom of a note card, glued my little uh, baseball down with a foam dot. Now I'm gluing my dog down right above that. 
going to take that $20 and tuck it underneath his arm. And then glue, I have some glue under the little foot and I'll push that against the card and that will hold it in place. So there you have the first way to hold money on the front of a card and that is to either tuck it into or behind a stamped image. This especially works great with playful images like this one. Okay, so the second way to incorporate money onto a card is to tuck it behind a die cut. So here I have the Celebrate die cut and I've got the $20 tucked right behind it. And I plan to give this to one of our neighbor girls who just graduated from eighth grade. Okay, so I have some black uh, cardstock here and I'm putting Stick It Adhesive on the back of this. So Stick It Adhesive is a nice thin double-sided tape that die cuts beautifully. So I, basically what I'm making here is black cardstock with adhesive on one side. I'm going to cut out a bunch of this Sugar Pea Designs Celebrate die cut. So you can see the black cardstock is facing up and that Stick It Adhesive is facing down. I ran it through and I'm just gonna keep all those words. So I'm going to do this six times. I'm gonna create six little die cuts and we're gonna layer them all on top of each other. The reason I'm doing this is it makes that die cut stronger. You can see that this is kind of delicate in between the letters because it's such a dainty a die cut. But when you glue several of these together, they become stronger. So I remove, remove the release paper from one and I'm lining it up on the other. You can see my die cut stayed in the paper there. That's actually kind of helpful because it makes it easier to layer one on top of the other. It's hard to see here because this is black cardstock, but here you can see now I have these two layered on top of each other. So I can go ahead and pop this one out. Then I will take the release paper off the back of that and then put this on top of the next die cut. So by having that adhesive, on the back of the die cut when I do the die cutting, it really saves me a lot of time when I go to glue each of these together. Some people like to just die cut black cardstock or regular cardstock without adhesive and then use spray adhesive. That would work fine too. I just don't like using spray adhesives in my house. So the top layer of this is actually black glitter paper that I had and I put adhesive on the back of that. So this is five layers of black cardstock die cut and the top layer is black glitter paper. Now you may recognize this note card here, this polka dot note card. I made this in a video a few days ago and I'll link to that here if you wanna check it out. I used a stencil to create that. Lila originally wanted this card, but then she decided she didn't. So I didn't want it to go to waste. So I'm using it here. I have die cut a circle just to kind of act as a backdrop for the money. Now I have some uh, a $20 bill here folded in half and then in half again. And I'm going to remove the release paper from the back of our stacked die cut, but only the release paper to both sides of the money because I don't want my die cut to stick to the money. I just want to take it off the beginning and the end of this die cut. So the release paper will stay on the back of the die cut in the middle section. So now I'm going to go ahead and press this down. And with Stick It, you really want to press firmly to make it stick. And remember that inside part won't stick. So it's actually like a little pocket to hold the money and it just slides right in there. This a technique of using a die cut to kind of hold the money in place is really quick and simple. So take a look at the dies that you may have and I bet you'll have many that would work for this. So that is my second idea. Now the third idea is probably my favorite. I used to teach this in classes all the time when I used to teach in stores years ago. And that is to create candles out of money. So this would be a great card or gift for a teenager. So I'm using my scissors to just quickly felt, or cut little felt flames. So this is just some yellow tailored expressions felt. Just randomly cutting little flame shapes. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm using a YR68 Copic marker just to add a little bit of orange at the bottom just to make it look even more like a flame. I have a piece of blue cardstock here. This is five and a quarter by four inches wide. And I'm putting the $20 bill to know where to poke my holes. I wanna poke a hole about mm, half of an inch above that in the center. And then a little bit over to one side and a little to the other because I wanna have three candles. You could just do one candle if you wanted to save some time and use less money. Now below the $20, I wanna put a um, dot right there in the center. Now I wanna make sure that my candles are straight. So instead of just randomly trying to line up the bottom holes with the top holes, I'm going to use my T-roller just to make sure that I have it right. So I'm putting three, three dot holes at the top of my card and three holes at the bottom. This will make sense in a moment as you see me put this together. 
Okay, so now I have a sentiment to put on the bottom. I think this is better to do this now than after we've added the candles. This is a Simon Says stamp, stamp set that has lots of great messages that are from us or from we. So I stamped, uh, we wish you a very happy birthday with Versamark ink, added some white Hero Arts embossing powder, and now I'm heat setting this. I thought that bright white looked nice against that bright blue background. Now I have a needle with some white floss. Any string would work for this. I'm going to do the first candle by coming up from the back of the paper to the front, and I'm just going to lay my string down. Next I'm going to adhere my felt flames and I'm gluing these right on top of the little hole that we have at the top of our card. So basically the hole is behind that orange portion of the felt uh, flames that we've created here. Okay, so now that I have my little flames in place, I'm going to take a $20 bill and I'm going to roll it as tight as I can around this string. So I'm going to get started by kind of folding it in. It's kind of tricky to get it going nice and tight, but once you start rolling, it will just roll into a nice tight candle very quickly. So as I'm rolling, I am sure to roll that floss into it. My flame came off, don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm going to roll that floss into it. So basically, I am wrapping the $20 bill around that string. So that's what's going to hold it in place. I'm not gluing the, dollar, the $20 bill to the card. I'm just holding it there with the string. So I'm putting a tiny bit of adhesive on the flap to close this. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You could, again, just tie a little knot of string around it or maybe some clear fishing twine. But now my money is wrapped around the string. So I'm just kind of tightening it up, making sure it's nice and snug. Now I can put my flame back in place since it came off. And I'm going to put the stitch, the, the needle, right through the flame. So you'll see it ends up looking like a wick there at the top of my card. Okay, so I've got my flame in place. I'm going to poke right through that hole that we created. And there we have our candle. I'm going to go to the other side and tie a double knot so that this won't come undone. And that string is what's holding that rolled dollar bill on the front of the card. So I'll go ahead and trim this, and you'll see that the white string up by the felt kind of looks like a wick, and it also holds us in place. So I did the same thing with all three candles. Once you've done it once, it really goes quickly. To finish this off, I glued this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. So you can see there is a white trim on both sides. I have two thin strips of yellow cardstock. This I actually got from my scrap drawer and just cut into thin strips. Put an adhesive on the back of those and I'm gonna glue these thin strips right along the edge. Just to add a bright yellow line to the outside, I just felt like this needed a little something else. After trimming off the excess, I decided to spray this whole thing with just a little shimmer mist. I love this sparkle shimmer. I hold it from about two feet above and sprayed it three times, maybe four times, to get a very light mist over the whole thing. And look at that beautiful shine that you get. If you have any big droplets of the mist, you can kind of wipe it with your finger just to kind of smooth it out. So there is the third way to hold money on a card, and that is to get creative and make it part of the card. I have in the past actually stamped a snowman, and I just rolled up the money to make a scarf around the snowman. So you can really think outside of the box and come up with fun ways to incorporate cash onto a card. It makes the card even more personal. Okay, so if you want to find out more about the products I use, you can check the YouTube description below, or you can go over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com. In the middle, I have two videos that I've created where I show how to incorporate gift cards onto cards. You could use cash in these examples also. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you return again soon. Have a great week.